Ryan Tannehill has dramatically shifted the trajectory of his career over the last year and a half since taking over the starting job in Tennessee. That's due in part to being free from Adam Gase. With some cleaner mechanics, Tannehill's transformation has lifted the Titans into the playoffs for two consecutive seasons. He has cleaner deep ball mechanics, is better under pressure, and most importantly, the system with Arthur Smith in Tennessee was an actual functional timing and rhythm based system that integrated boot action off of outside zone to Derrick Henry. To understand Tannehill's growth, we have to look at his time in Miami first. While Tannehill wasn't exactly busting out of the league by the end of his seven seasons there, he was playing inefficiently, struggling with deep balls, and was in an offensive system that can only be loosely called a system. The biggest issue with Gase's offense in 2018 and Tannehill's fit in it is the lack of cohesion between the route concepts and the quarterback's footwork. Footwork operates as a timing mechanism for quarterbacks and as a way to get them to their base at the same time that they should be looking at each individual read. That just wasn't happening in Tannehill's time with the Dolphins. Here it's third and four, and there isn't a single route call that's under 10 yards. The Colts are in cover one with one deep safety and man coverage underneath. The routes themselves aren't terrible and they end up popping open, but the problem is that the Dolphins have absolutely no outlet for Tannehill to throw to if he encounters quick pressure. What's more, not a single route is at their break point by the time Tannehill is at the top of his drop. The out and up double move at the bottom can't be thrown until they're into the vertical section of their route. The dig is breaking at 15 yards, but the receiver is only 5 yards downfield, and the seam is capped by the man defender and the safety. As a result, Tannehill has to hitch forward two separate times before anyone is even ready to get the ball. Those hitches have also moved Tannehill forward in the pocket and into interior pressure. With that interior pressure, Tannehill has to bail from the pocket and is eventually sacked. It all comes back to the play call, footwork, and protection. The Dolphins are leaving seven guys in against five rushers, giving Tannehill no outlet to dump the ball off to, and yet still allow the sack despite having two more men in protection than the defense is rushing. All of those are depressingly common themes for the 2018 Dolphins. The Dolphins had the 31st ranked offensive line by PFF that year, and Tannehill was absolutely terrible under pressure with a QBR of 41.1. Making it even worse was that Tannehill was under pressure 40% of his snaps. However, when he was in a clean pocket, his QBR rocketed up to 116.6. So there's evidence here that he can perform at a high level. The source of those issues can be directly tied to the footwork, lack of hot routes, and missing rhythm and timing within the offense. Gase had an astonishing lack of hot routes and solutions for pressure. Teams playing the Dolphins weren't scared of the receiving core, they knew the offensive line was shaky, and they just blitzed the hell out of them while manning up behind it. And it worked. And what's more, Gase didn't adjust. The Dolphins are in third and eight here against the Vikings who had been blitzing them all day, and Miami is running 15 yard curls and a seam against their man coverage. Again, too, the Dolphins are using a seven man production. Yet, by the time Tannehill gets to the top of his drop, not only are there no receivers even remotely ready for the ball, but there's already pressure in his lap. Even if Tannehill could get the ball off, there's no back leaking out underneath, or a hot route to hit. As a result, the Dolphins take the sack, and the drive is over. To combat some of the pressure and struggles on the offensive line, Gase went to a heavily RPO and zone read based offense early in the season. Those concepts actually did have some success. They got the ball out of Tannehill's hands fast, held defenders in the run game, and helped the Dolphins move the ball. The problem was, Gase abandoned the RPO and zone read stuff for outside zone and boot. Except nobody was threatened by the Dolphins outside zone, so nobody cared to crash on it, and that would kill the boot action off of it. Working play action off of outside zone is a staple for Shanahan, LaFleur, McVeigh, and later Arthur Smith. It's incredibly effective, but it's most effective when run from under center, and a little oversight by Gase was that he just didn't run outside zone very much from under center. So when Tannehill did get under center and fake the outside zone, nobody bit. Now combine that with Gase's apparent distaste for short throws to combat pressure and you've got a bad combination of things going on. As we conclude the issues in Miami, let's look at one last thing and that's Tannehill's deep ball mechanics. Tannehill had problems sequencing his deep balls and as a result had some accuracy issues. It starts with his feet. Mechanically quarterbacks will want to keep their shoulders close to their target until they can get weight under their front lead foot. That helps them sequence the throw, stay balanced, and maintain power and accuracy. A common issue is to open the hips and separate the offhand from the throwing hand too early. That's what was happening to Tannehill and it caused some accuracy problems. 
To compensate for not being in sequence and slightly off balance, he would also use a large arm throw with his off hand that would cause further issue. Ideally, you want to keep that arm tight to the body because it can cause over rotation and imbalance. You can see in this frame where Tannehill finally has weight on his front foot and his upper body and hips have already started to open too early. You want to maintain contact with the ball and separate only as weight is being transferred. That helps to keep your shoulders closed and maintain the throwing sequence. There needs to be upper and lower body disassociation to create tension, which is then released during the throw. By opening up the hips and upper body too early, that eliminates that tension and forces Tannehill to use more of his upper body and arm to generate power and accuracy rather than his lower body. So that's a lot of stuff that went wrong in 2018. The good news for Titans and Tannehill fans is that almost every single one of those issues was resolved two years later in 2020. The footwork got cleaned up and tied to the route concepts, the outside zone with Henry was an actual threat and forced defenses to respect it, and Tannehill's mechanics also got a tune-up. He wasn't perfect, but the system and footwork made a world of difference in Tannehill's efficiency and his ability to deal with pressure as well. By tying in rhythm-based throws, the ball is coming out faster, Tannehill knows where to look based on where he is in his drop, and he has answers for dealing with pressure looks. As we did with 2018, we'll start with Tannehill's footwork and how it's tied to routes. Arthur Smith saw Tannehill's ability to quickly diagnose and read defender keys in the RPO game from his time in Miami. That led him to install some similar single defender reads in his quick game in Tennessee. The Titans are running Lion, a cover two beater to the bottom of the screen. The Bills are in cover two man, with the middle linebacker taking the back in coverage. Dan Hill is taking a shuffle drop, and as soon as he hits the top of his drop, he diagnoses that the middle of the field has been vacated with the linebacker coming down on the running back, and immediately hits his receiver in stride. Having his footwork tied to the routes allowed Tannehill to throw with greater anticipation as well. He knows his receiver's route is linked to where he is in his drop. With that timing, he can now throw to spots with anticipation instead of waiting to see guys break open. He does that here on a sail route to AJ Brown. Tannehill is now taking a three-step drop. Tannehill hits his back foot and begins his throwing motion before Brown has broken on his route. Against man coverage, that's almost impossible to defend, and the ball is already in the air by the time AJ Brown has turned to look for the ball. The same rhythm and footwork also takes him to his second and third reads via hitches in his drop. A lot of people think that throwing in rhythm just means hitting the top of your drop and letting the ball go, but you can still be in rhythm throughout the duration of the play if your footwork is matching where you're looking. At the top of his drop here, Tannehill is looking to the quick out at the top of the screen. However, the route is capped outside by the corner. Next, he hitches forward and moves his eyes to his second read, which is the dig in the middle of the field. On that hitch, that's telling him to look at his next read. The dig is open, he's on rhythm with his footwork, and he throws the ball for a completion. That footwork also helps him deal with pressure. If he feels a collapsing pocket, his feet will tell him where in the timeline of the play he is and where the ball should end up. Especially on blitzes, that keeps him within the rhythm of the play and able to find an outlet to dump the ball off to. In fact, in 2019, he had the best rating under pressure in the NFL, and a lot of that is due to the design of the plays with hot reads, outlets, and tying those routes to his footwork. The system as a whole in Tennessee just flat out operated in a more linear and cohesive manner. The Titans utilized Henry in an outside zone scheme, and that started everything that they wanted to do off of play action. When you have a guy that can actually demand attention in the run game like Henry can, defenses have to respect and collapse on run fakes, and that leaves space for Tannehill to get out on the boot. The threat of Derrick Henry also has a trickle-down effect not only of alleviating pressure on Tannehill, but also opening up routes in the flats that offer yard after catch opportunities. The Titans are running similar sale concepts to what Gase was trying to get to, except Tennessee gets someone in the flats immediately for an outlet and can actually sell the outside zone going the other direction to pull defenders out of passing lanes. To finish up, let's revisit Tannehill's deep ball mechanics. This throw against the Lions is a great example of Tannehill keeping his shoulders closed and square to the throw for as long as possible. His foot is in the ground before his hands separate, and he's maintaining tension, which allows him to generate power from his lower body. He can still get a little wild with his offhand and throwing himself open, but he's done a much more consistent job at keeping that arm tight and preventing over rotation there. His throwing motion is much more condensed, and he's becoming a much more accurate deep ball thrower as a result. There's a lot of things that went into Tannehill's transformation. A new system, work on his footwork, cleaning up his mechanics in an offseason where he didn't have to be the week one starter, and just flat out getting a change of scenery. The growth has been great, and with the weapons that the Titans have in A.J. Brown, Derrick Henry, and Julio Jones, 
The sky's the limit for the Titans on offense, and with some more consistent play from their defense, they might just get over the hump and make it to the Super Bowl. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching all the way through. Make sure you drop a comment. Let me know someone, a scheme, idea, person who you want to see broken down here in the future before we start the, the regular NFL season. And make sure to check out the Football 101 series. I'm trying to post that every Monday. And I'll see you guys on the next breakdown.